Good evening. Welcome to Greenstone Services. My name is Shane Robertson. I will be your guide this evening. Since the day has gone on, I've had an opportunity, after finishing up with my customers, to read the rest of the articles I wanted to read before presenting this video. Um, one of the things that I have read is a few more articles on the Sea Cleaner 5.33 attack. Um, and I'm going to call it an attack now. It's, it's more than just an exploit. Uh, so what are some things that we need to know? Uh, the first thing that we need to know is that it's got three stages. So what does it do? Um, under stage one, it was just getting on your machine. So stage one it was just C cleaner. And under stage one, there was a couple of files that gets onto your machine. That is GEE setup underscore x86.dll. Then you had two others. If you have a 32 bit computer, it's tsmslsrv.dll. And then if you have a 64 bit computer, it is efacl. I 64.dll now again that is for cleaner 5.33 since then they have found it they have removed it so it's perfectly safe to use again uh, and it was perfectly safe to use before so how do we find out if we are affected by it and what is it anyway that's going on it's a very clever attack. Uh, it was designed to look like it was going to be hitting a whole lot of people. Um, it was being credited for being on 2 billion computers because there was 2 billion downloads for 5.33. It was a bunch of smoke and mirrors is what it was, and it was very clever. Um, essentially, the way that they designed it was that in stage 1, it gets these files installed. In stage two, it parsed the information, or it went through the information to find out if the computers that had these files installed were on a list of domains. And if they were, then install stage two. And then, if the information gathered in stage two match certain parameters, then install stage three and move forward from there. Um, by the way, I have to credit uh, Talos Intelligence, and I have to credit Cisco, and I have to credit um, uh, Kaspersky as well uh, for the information that I'm going to be listing. Uh, so those three files, let's see if they are on my machine. And I'm going to do this the tech way. First, let's just search for them, see if they're there. We're going to look for the 64-bit file. No, it's not there. Now let's look for the 32-bit file. It's not there. And let's look for the GE setup. It's not there either. So I dodged a bullet. Now if you happen to have any of these three files, it is completely 100% recommended that you must have your computer wiped. It must be done. Because if it already knows the information that it knows about your machine, it's only going to get ugly for you. Uh, so if you find any of these on there and you don't own Corel and you're not a business partner that has signed up exclusively and has Symantec endpoint and you keep up with a service contract that cost about sixteen to twenty four hundred dollars a year or more then more than likely uh, you didn't dodge a bullet and you need help in a big way 
And again, please spread this video so that people locally here will find out. I'm not doing this so that you will bring me your computer. Uh, I'm doing this so that people that get the infections can take their computers to professionals here locally, uh, either myself, Computer Dave, whomever. Uh, those, those would definitely be the two that I would say take them to. Uh, that way people can have what they need done, done. So what does stage two do? Stage two, if it had these files installed, parses your machine for some very personal information. And it's very unique that it's able to do this. It creates a SQL database. And then, after it does that, it starts writing information, such as your time zone, the local host or the name of your machine, the user of your machine, which is this part, so whatever you have that named as. Um, and then it gets, or tries to get the password. It also tries to get any other names and tables that it can get from the memory. Uh, and writes it all to this SQL. Then, it tries to pass it across SSL uh, server port 443 to the G EE setup DLL, which then forwards it on to a P2P server off of your machine, uh, from what I understand. And if your machine is within that domain list that I mentioned earlier, and you match whatever they're looking for, then it sends a stage 3, stage 2 payload to your machine and it's a PE payloader. They haven't decoded it yet because it only resides in memory. And that's the reason why I'm saying that it needs to be done by a professional because simply just reinstalling from hitting F7 on boot is probably not going to take care of it. More than likely the BIOS of the motherboard, the battery is going to have to be yanked, the machine is going to have to be discharged, things are going to have to be disconnected and reconnected to get rid of this completely. Uh, it's a pretty nasty little bugger. So the PHP script will later, uh, after all three variables are matched up for whatever they're looking for, will initiate that stage three payload and get the rest of the information it's looking for out of whatever machine they've targeted and send it back. Uh, with them just playing with it, they were able to find out what programs were installed, and I don't mean a generality, very specific. Camera communication driver package installed on 9.9 of 2009 version 1.0.0.0, Picasa 3, Team Viewer 9.0, Roxio Central Tools. These are things that are listed in what they found about some of the machines that they had pushed this to. Uh, also, process list. So, all the processes that Windows were using. Things as what me and you would think of, why would they need to know this, would actually be useful to somebody that was trying to penetrate a machine. And then on top of all that, um, it also has host names of and the types. And if it's a null value, meaning is it a zero or a one, I mean, it's got all the information that a white hat black hat hack hacker would want to be able to get into a computer. Now, why would they want this? Why is this a big deal? Why am I going on about this for so long? It's quite simple. If by chance they got this into a machine that was a Microsoft machine, higher up, Microsoft server, that was responsible for OneDrive, and then they were able to get into all of the OneDrive accounts and get everybody's documents and then threaten to sell everybody's personal information. That would be a financial win for them. What if they were to get into, let's say, uh, Google, Gmail, and they were going to sell off everybody's email accounts and passwords? What if they were able to get into et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? That's the point of this attack is from what I'm seeing and what I've read. That's the main point of it. Now, the complexity of their attack is that they can change that at any given time. They can target different domains. So if you're a business 
and you had a www dot your name dot something and you have a server you can be targeted home users on that if you're a very advanced home user you could be targeted as well but it's less likely um, so it's not something that's going to be so much for the home users but if by chance you accidentally ended up with these three files or any of these three files you certainly need to have your machine clean <laughs> alright so moving on to conclusion time Yay! Stage 3 still is an unknown. They have found it, they do know it's there, but it's got survival techniques. It's designed to disappear, it's designed to completely evade being decoded, debugged, and looked at. And that's about all that they know right now. It's a lot of information, but I just wanted to pass all that all to everyone so that you guys can make some informed decisions. Now, again, do I trust CCleaner? Yes, I certainly do. Is this a paid or sponsored video? No, it is not. I don't even have a thousand views yet, so I can't do monetization on any of my videos. Uh, so I'm not gonna make any money on this whatsoever. So even if it gets to 10,000 or 1 million views, it won't happen. But it is important to me that you guys know as much as I do about it. So until next time, I'll sign off. And I hope that you're better than worse now. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.